Hi, this is your host Sapin Bhartia and welcome to another episode of TFR. Let's talk and today we have with us once again Mike Kelly, CEO of Observe IQ. Mike, it's great to have you back on the show again after a long time. Yeah, it's great to talk with you again. Looking forward to it. Yeah, and I, if I'm not wrong, last time when uh, I talked to you, your CTO, you now your CEO, so I also understand, you know, <laughs> I want to revisit, recap a few things, first of all, about Observe IQ and that in your role as CEO, how do you look at the ch challenges in this space that you folks are trying to solve and how are you going to tackle them in your new position? Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, so as you mentioned, I, I shifted from CTO at Observe IQ to CEO uh, earlier this year. Um, and, you know, it's an exciting time for the company and, and what we're, um, I, I think, for the space as well. At Observe IQ, we're really focused on observability telemetry. So building the agents and the integrations and the observability pipelines, really everything that you need to, to gather, process, and uh, send and transmit the data through an observability pipeline. Um, and doing that through open source. So, uh, you know, with projects like OpenTelemetry and others right now moving uh, the, the space to open source and to standards, uh, this has been, I think, a, you know, an incredible time uh, for the industry and particularly for the standardization on telemetry. So, you know, as we've been focused on that over the last several years at Observe IQ, we're starting to see that accelerate uh, with new products and uh, just an acceleration of the development of these open source projects that are already out there. Since you mentioned open source projects, you know, um, of course, open telemetry is one of the major one, many ones, which is also kind of merger of a couple of projects there, uh, of, you know, open tracing and open sense and all those projects. Uh, I also want to understand Observe IQ's involvement with some of these projects. It could either be either consuming them or, you know, uh, offering commercial support with them or uh, contributing to them. So there are three C's. <laughs> yeah, so a great question. So when it comes to you know these open source projects, um, we've been partnering with uh, vendors to uh, work on them together and then provide them to to customers. So we have a partnership that we've um, uh, have with Google and have had for a number of years, and they're one of the primary folks that we're working with, um, uh, you know, to support their their customers in the field and accelerate the, the expansion of the Google Ops. Google Operations platform into other uh, third-party applications and uh, on-prem support and support for other clouds and doing that through open source. So that's, you know, one of the ways that we're involved. We also um, develop and distribute our own products that are uh, built around that. And uh, most recently, uh, we've just launched into beta a product called Bindplane Observability Pipeline. And this is uh, the first open source product that's designed to manage uh, these open source agents, in particular, the open telemetry collector, uh, and manage the uh, configuration, the uh, pipeline management, and make it really easy to configure, update, uh, and manage all of your, your full fleet of observability uh, telemetry. Let's go a bit deeper into both of these announcements. Let's start with the Google Cloud Platform Partnership. Talk about, you know, um, uh, a bit about this partnership. What are you folks are doing together and, you know, how you're helping uh, joint customers? Yeah, great question. So um, we've, we've been working with Google for many years now, and um, the partnership's always been focused on, uh, you know, expanding the visibility that you get from Google Operations platform. So the ability to, to use uh, uh, their solutions to monitor not just your Google, uh, Google Cloud components and services, but also to use that for third-party applications, uh, you know, custom logs that you're trying to, to gather to, if you want to pull in data from other cloud vendors, you can do that as well, um, and even on-prem data centers. So that's one of the challenges that a lot of customers have is as you're migrating from one place to another, you, you really need to have centralized visibility, even if you have, uh, you may still have a, a homegrown data center that you're, that you're managing. So what we do is uh, partner to, to expand that visibility. And we do that a couple of ways. Uh, the most uh, relevant one today is by working uh, jointly on some of these projects and expanding the visibility. So for example, this year we've, we've um, developed a number of uh, uh, metric integrations, log integrations, um, and also a, a very high performance log agent that's designed to to process data really easily, it's highly configurable, um, and uh, uh, something that is you know open source and available for 
uh, you know, very large enterprise customers. And ultimately, we decided to uh, to donate that to the Open Telemetry Project, and have been working jointly to to incorporate that into the project. So now that's available as a, a piece of Open Telemetry, which which we think is really exciting to to have everything from traces, uh, but also now metrics and and finally logs all within one collector that can be really universal. Um, and when you think of that, then then you know that that's as I mentioned something we've worked with Google on. But also, it's really benefits the entire community because this is a project that uh, is becoming a one-stop shop for all of your telemetry needs, and you can use this as a uh, really the universal solution for for gathering and processing telemetry data. So we find that exciting. I, I think that there's a there's a um, great future ahead for for this and other projects like it. Yeah, thanks for explaining the the kind of partnership you folks have with Google. Now let's talk about the open source project uh, Bind Plane. Talk a bit about uh, what is this project all about? And uh, also, once again, does it serve the same common audience? And if yes, how does it complement the uh, efforts that you're making with other players? Yeah, uh, great question. And um, there are a couple of things that we, you know, when we're, we're talking about buying plane, as I like to focus on, one is the challenges of, of telemetry. So we talked a little bit about the collector, and that's the first piece, right? You, you, need, to, you need a way to instrument and, and gather the data and process the data. But in very large environments, it becomes challenging just to manage those those agents across hundreds or thousands of hosts. So when you're really trying to um, trying to manage massive amounts of, of telemetry data, uh, you need a solution layered on top of that, and that's where Bindplane comes in. And um, uh, Bindplane is a product um, that we've had for a number of years, and and for uh, uh, prior to this latest release, it was always a SaaS only offering. And so what we're doing today is we're, we're providing this as a, um, uh, a distribution. It's open source. We're open sourcing the product. And we're also uh, providing a version that you can deploy within your own environments. And that's been a big need and something that people are looking for. Um, what it lets you do is uh, uh, control all of your agents, deploy agents, really easily manage the configuration across a large fleet of hundreds or thousands of agents and control the flow of data to multiple destinations. So you can think of a, some use cases like, um, you know, maybe you have a fleet of hosts that you're trying to monitor and, uh, and it's a, a few thousand of these. And maybe some of them are, are within a certain group, a development group, and you, you want to apply the same type of configuration to those. Well, buy and play makes that really easy. And it's uh, rather than being a, a gen general or generic type of uh, a DevOps tool, it's really dedicated to telemetry and that makes it easier to make adjustments. So if you, for example, decide that uh, tomorrow we want to reduce the amount of log data flowing through my system, you can make those adjustments within Bindplane. Or if you decide, well, I want to send off compliance data, compliance logs, and send that to a low cost storage bucket somewhere, you can do that with fine plane. And it doesn't require the re-instrumentation and going through every single uh, uh, host or agent and either deploying new agents, deploying new configurations, all the complexities that you, that you, if you've done this before, you know it can be an incredibly challenging task. So the solution here is simplify the deployment, simplify the configuration, simplify the management, and then simplify how you get data from source to destination. Now let's just zoom out of you know uh, Observe IQ and the the work that you folks are doing, and just look at uh, let's observe the observability space itself. Uh, first of all, if you can please you know because last time we take it's been a while, uh, how the observability space has evolved because the workloads are changing, the deployment of Kubernetes has increased, uh, a lot of folks are you know putting it in production, which also means that the challenges are different now. Uh, there is more awareness about it as well. So from your perspective, how do you see the evolution of this space? Yeah, great question. And, you know, we have, uh, um, and I certainly have a biased view on that, as does everyone, right? But I, I think one of the areas that you see a lot of the changes um, is just the, the the quantity of data, right, that, that's available and is required. Um, and as the quantity of data has grown, um, the challenges of, of managing it have grown, the cost of, of storing and uh, processing it has also grown, and you you see this new emerging need, or uh, at least acknowledgement of a need for 
an observability pipeline layer. So some type of way to, to inject some processing capability before it gets to that final de the, the destination. Um, and that does a lot of things, right? It, it simplifies uh, um, the, the flow of data. It allows you to, to send data where it needs to go and allows you to reduce the amount of data that's flowing. So if you're, you know, what you'll find in large environments is you end up with this, um, you know, it's, you, you end up collecting all the data, all the logs, um, because it's just too difficult to really narrow down what you need. And um, observability pipelines help you avoid that, right? Because they, they make it easier to go in and actually manage the data as it's flowing through the, the pipe, reduce the data, filter down the data, and ultimately use some, some um, uh, AI and ML on that data prior to it getting to that, that destination. And when you, when you really, when you layer this in between, it solves a lot of problems in it, uh, opens up a lot more opportunities. Uh, and some of those are, you know, the use cases, uh, I think we've talked a little bit about, whether it's compliance. A lot of companies, they're struggling with compliance. They need low cost storage for all of these logs. They don't necessarily need it in a, in a high cost SIM or, um, you know, performance management solution. So with a, with a pipeline that makes it easy to collect and send that data to you know, your low cost storage. In the same way, you can use that same instrumentation to send it wherever else it needs to go. So over the last few years, just seeing that evolution and this as something that's recognized as a, um, a solution that um, you know, unlocks a lot of potential, can reduce your costs, but also just improves, improves your visibility and kind of keeps your eye on, on what's important. Uh, that's been pretty notable to me. Now, uh, when you and I sit down, we love to talk about technology, but the fact is when we talk about business enterprise customers, of course, they do use technology as means to an end, uh, but they are solving a specific problem for their customers. They are solving a specific problem for business continuity or add new features and value. So when we look at observability, can you talk about where does it fit into the whole business landscape, you know, so that, you know, they do when their, you know, client success teams, they look at it, you know, where you, that, that yes, observability is a critical piece of our business delivery. Yeah, that's a good, it's a, it's a good question. And of course, you know, as people are focused on the technology, it's easy to, to gloss over, right? But ultimately the, the primary goal of observability solutions, particularly if you're looking at performance management, um, is managing and understanding uh, your uptime, right? right? Are these systems available? Are they um, delivering? And can your business uh, continue at the pace that it's at? And so if you're not achieving that goal, then it's um, then I think that, that it's fair to say that observability, at least in this case, is not achieving its goal. So, you know, I think that it's a critical piece. and. There are a couple of ways that I, I think people, uh, there, there are missteps along the way, right? I think that sometimes what you'll see in observability is, um, you know, you, you take your eye off the ball of, we really want to focus on making sure that things are, are operating correctly for the end user, making sure that this is successful and having a tight loop. So as there's an issue, how do we resolve that quickly? And if you get into a place of, of gathering everything, right? If, if it's for the, the sake of observing everything, you really can't do that effectively. So, you know, there, there's been a lot written on this, whether it's around SRE, um, uh, uh, some good work around SRE that, um, uh, you know, Google has done focusing on the key signals that really matter. But um, ultimately, that's, that's where, where you really need to rely on observability. And without it, you're, you're lost in a lot of ways. If you don't have solutions in place, that are helping you quickly identify if there's a failure, effectively do that, and also iterate quickly. Um, it's really difficult to hit the SLOs that you're committing yourself to. So, you know, certainly a key piece of that, and also a piece that's really, really easy to to get wrong or to overdo sometimes. Earlier we were talking about Mindplane. Uh, it's in beta. Can you talk about first of all what kind of time frame is an open source project? So, especially open source projects don't have a specific time frame. It's beta. So, but you know. Uh, it's in beta phase, so what is your kind of, you know, um, plan for this beta, how long you will run the beta, who can access it, how can it, they can access it, and what kind of feedback you are, you know, kind of expecting, and when can we see the GA for this uh, project? Yeah, um, yeah, thanks for asking about that. So, 
it's in uh, beta and it went into beta in the middle of June. So it's been out for a little under a month so far. Um, we've had great feedback so far. It's uh, publicly available. So if you go to observeiq.com, you'll find Find Plane OP. Um, so go in and, and download it and try it out. And really what we're looking for right now in this phase is, um, you know, there are a lot of, there's a lot of functionality on the roadmap and um, expanding this into a, uh, you know, full blown observability pipeline solution is, is the goal. But we want to know what people are looking for today and, and what they want to see in the next couple of months and um, uh, through the end of the year. So we expect this to be in GA in, in August. So it's coming up really quickly. Um, and there will be additional SaaS versions that we uh, will provide later this year. So pretty aggressive roadmap. There's a lot there. And, uh, but I think even today in, in beta, it's a really compelling product that um, I'd love it if more people uh, wanted to give it a shot. We also have a Slack community. If um, you know, you're interested in trying it out, you can find all of that at observeiq.com. Mike, thank you so much for taking time out today and talking only about your partnership with Google Cloud Platform. Uh, announcement of beta for bind plane, but also in general, uh, where observability space is, uh, what kind of you know evolution we are witnessing there, and also what to expect uh, in the coming uh, months. We cannot talk about years at this point. So thank you for sharing all those insights, and I would love to have you back on the show as usual. Thank you. Excellent. I appreciate it. It was great to talk to you again.